Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril. Today I'm once again holidaying in the realms of Gondor and finishing off the three main heroes from the new starter set with the Ranger Captain, Madril. The biggest challenge with these three models was trying to create unique paint schemes to let every Ranger stand out and shine on the tabletop with essentially what is a very similar natural colour palette. I mean, this is a Ranger with absolutely no green on him and that's a deliberate choice. Also, I recommend again not doing what I did and paint your scenic ruins separately from the model. I just got a bit too excited, again, and assembled the whole thing prior to painting. Well, aside from that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Brush is ready guys, and let's get painting! Base Colours Well I'm sure you can all guess what I'm starting with here. As per usual, the face and the exposed flesh was base coated using Bugman's Glow. The hair was base coated using a few thinned down layers of grey sear. The black tunic was given a base coat with a 4 to 1 ratio mix of Abaddon Black and Incubi Darkness. The braces and brown leather areas were given a slightly more complex base coat consisting of a three part mix of Doomball Brown, Baraknar Burgundy and Abaddon Black in an approximate 3-1-1 ratio. The cloak was given a base coat with a 3 to 1 ratio mix of Thondia Brown and Rhinox Hide, again in a few thin down layers to get nice smooth coverage. The boots, trousers and sleeves were given a 50-50 base coat of Abaddon Black and Storm Vermin Fur. Finally, the gloves were picked out carefully using Catatan Flesh. Skin The face was then layered up using a 50-50 mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone. A thorough shape was then applied using diluted Reichland Flesh Shade, letting this sink into all the recesses. Once it was dry, layer over again with the previous mix, but increasing the concentration of Cadian Flesh Tone in the mix to an approximate 3 to 1 ratio. gradually working your way up to a highlight, initially using pure Cadian Flesh Tone. Continue working up the highlights over Madril's facial features with a 3 to 1 ratio mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Kislev Flesh. Gradually adding in Pallid Witch Flesh to the mix for the final few highlight stages, pushing these as far as you want depending on how aged and how drawn you want Madril to be. Mm -hmm. 
The eye recesses were picked out carefully with Abaddon Black. And then finished off with two dots of pallid witch flesh either side. Hair. The hair was given a shade using some heavily diluted Mechanica Standard Grey. This will shade the hair much more softly than non oil would at this stage. Once this is dry and you're happy with the tone so far, re-layer over all the hair again using Gracia, focusing on creating initial definition throughout the scalp by picking out the individual strands of hair. At this stage now, you can apply a further shade using diluted non-oil if you feel it's needed. I must stress it's purely optional at this stage, it depends how much you want to tone down the hair. With your undertones and shadows in place, it's time to start layering up the hair now by using a 2 to 1 ratio mix of grey sear and white scar. Keeping the white scar concentration at a minimum initially, just to avoid overblowing the contrast between the darker greys and the lighter white at the moment. Continue adding white scar in gradual increments until you're using a highlight mix which is a 1 to 2 ratio mix in favour of the white scar. With these highlights you want to avoid thinning down your paint too much to prevent it bleeding into the recesses and ruining your pre-established shading. Apply a final glaze to the hair with a thoroughly diluted shade of non oil. Tunic. Apply a pre layer shade to the tunic by adding deepkin flesh to the base coat mix in an approximate 3 to 1 ratio, favouring the base coat mix. Apply a manual shade to the tunic now using pure Abaddon Black. This is one of the reasons I use an off black for the base coat and the first layer, so I could create some defined shading with pure black, a less labour intensive way of creating shadow from the ground up. I'm now going to push the shading a little bit further by shading again with non oil. Once this is dried, it will also create a slight aged look to the black leathery material. Increase the concentration of deepkin flesh gradually now as you build up and progress through the layering stages. Again, as I say, keep the additions gradual so you don't overwhelm the tones of the black too early on. As you progress onto the initial highlight stages, start adding Ulthran Grey into the previous layer mix, very gradually, keeping your application tight and controlled to try and reinforce that leathery, almost shiny texture to the tunic.
as you did with the layer stages, adding small amounts more Ulthran Grey into the mix for the final few highlight stages. Your final mix should be an approximate 3 to 2 ratio split in favour of the layering mixture. Now that you've finished the base tunic, it's time to paint the trim using the same mix as you did for the braces and other browns. I've done this after finishing the tunic so we can keep both areas clean and separate as I progress through the model. I'm going to be tackling the other browns as well as the trim at this stage to keep the tones and hues consistent. I'm going to start with an initial shade over all these areas using Agrax Surf Shade, again thinned down about 50% of Lamia Medium. Start layering up the browns now by adding Scrag Brown into the base coat mix. This does make for a fairly heavy mixture of paint, but trust me the effect works overall once you're done. Now you want to focus on framing the trim further and layering up the braces and leathers leaving the Agrax Earth Shade showing in the recesses. Ok so now your blocking layer is in place, I'm going to start adding Cadian Flesh Tone gradually into the mix. This will complement the richness added from the scrag, but also slightly desaturate the tones to give an aged and worn look to the brown levers, and help give a spot colour in contrast to the very dark hues we've used so far for Madril's Glows. When you're happy with how this looks, apply a highlight now by adding between 25 and 35% Screaming Skull into the mix. The ratio is dependent on how bright you want this to come up. Yeah, there is a lot of paint in this mix, but look at how crisp and authentic these leathers now look with this final edge highlight over the brace patterns and edges of all the trims. Finally, a targeted glaze of Seraphim Sepia was added to tie in all the layers and highlights together. Cloak. To begin with, a manual shade was applied to the cloak recesses using Rhinox Hide. The cloak has great definition over the surface, so placement here should be an absolute doddle. This is all the shading the cloak should need, but you can apply a wash of Agrax Earth Shade if you want to push it a little bit further. When you're happy with how the cloak looks with the shading in place, apply a blocking layer over the larger areas and folds of material using pure Thondia Brown. This has a nice chocolatey hue which will complement the mahogany of the other leathers and the more understated hues of the tunic. Continue layering up the cloak now with a 2 to 1 mix of Thundia Brown and Towel Light Ochre.
increasing the tallow ochre gradually for the final layer stages and the first initial highlight stages. The final highlights can be accomplished by adding ungore flesh into the overall mix. Now you can push this definition as far as you wish at this stage by adding as much or as little ungore flesh as you feel is necessary. Finally, again, a glaze of Reichland Fleche was applied to the cloak to tie all these stages together. Remaining cloth and leathers. The boots, sleeves and quiver were given an initial shade using thinned down Nulm Oil. These areas were then layered up by increasing the amount of storm vermin fur in the original base coat mix. Working your way up to an edge highlight using pure storm vermin fur. The gloves were given a layer using a 50-50 mix of Catajan flesh and Knight's Questor flesh, leaving the base coat showing between the finger recesses. You can push the depth a bit further here by adding an optional targeted wash with Agrax Surfshade. Followed by a targeted highlight over the knuckles and fingertips using pure Knight's Questor flesh. All the straps, the bow, the boot trim were then very carefully picked out using dry up bark. then given a quick targeted edge highlight using Gawthor Brown on the upper and lower parts of all the straps. finishing details. Carefully pick out any silver details, buckles and brooches using lead belcher. Followed by a targeted wash of null oil to tone these down with the rest of the model.
apply an edge highlight now using Stormhost Silver to create some shine and glint to the metals. The belt buckle and bronze details were then picked out using Rune Lord Brass. Shade it down again as you did the silvers, but this time using Agrax Earthshade. Then given the same edge highlight treatment for Shine using Canoptech Alloy. The fletchings in the quiver were carefully picked out using XV88. A dot highlight down the length of the feathers was then applied using Dawn Yellow. Scenic base. The scenic base ruins were base coated in a few thin down coats with a 50 50 mix of Rakar flesh and Grey Seer to marry in with the other ruins on the other Oskilia base heroes I've done so far. A thorough coat of Basilicarn and Grey was applied to the ruins now to tone them down and make them look grimy and aged. A thorough dry brush was given to the ruins by adding pallid witch flesh into the mix, used for the base coat. Being extremely careful here to avoid bleeding out onto the finished madrill if you've done what I did and attached the ruins in an excited rush before you've realised what you actually have to do later on. Add Pallid Witch Flesh in increments and apply more highlight dry brushes until you're using pure Pallid Witch Flesh to finish off the look of the ruins. The basing for Madril can be found in my 5 minutes base tutorial playlist. Once he's all based up, he's ready to help defend the ruined city of Osgiliath with Faramir and the rest of his ranger kin. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell for upload notifications. Until next time guys, take care and as always, happy hobbying!